we've handled one thing in our breaking camp program, the walk of faith. That our relationship with God is acquitted to a journey. It's a pilgrimage. It's a walk. It's a journey. It's called Alpha Omega, beginning, the ending, is everything in between. That means he's Ebenezer. It's called Alpha Omega, Ebenezer. Everything in between is him. So when the Acts of the Apostle says, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. When Paul says, I no longer live, the life I live, I live by faith. It's a walk of faith. Amen. It's a pilgrimage. Amen. It's a walk that begins with God. Amen. It's done in God. Amen. It's climax in God. Amen. When you gave your life to Christ, you began a new life. It's called the walk of faith. Amen. The journey of faith. You entered into God. Amen. So you're walking through God. You're walking in God. And you're walking to God. Amen. It is him that defines life. Amen. We are like men who are in the same room. Trying to identify the diverse avenues. And rooms and activities. In the same house. We are in him. Amen. We pray in him. Yes. Discovery is about discovering him. And the him you discover becomes the you to manifest. Amen. So you grow in. Amen. You grow in. You become in. Amen. And you display him. Amen. There is nothing outside him. We don't pick Christ and run with him. We, we, we don't exhibit Christ in our lives. We exhibit Christ in Christ. Any life that tries to portray Christ outside him is pure human religion, activities, and effort. When a man is in, when a man is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. The emphasis is in. We are in him. We are born into him. We are no longer in the world. We are in Christ. Amen. So we think in Christ. We pray in Christ. We walk in Christ. And the distance is Alpha Omega. Intervals are called Ebenezer. You are this far in him. Amen. Not away from him. You, God is not a yardstick to measure your progress. He is your journey. Amen. He is your destination. Amen. He is your reward. And everything about life is about him. Amen. If you look at the work of our hands, it is his grace. Uh -huh. When you look at family, it is his family. Uh -huh. When you define who you are, it is in him. Amen. So Paul says, I no longer live. Yes. The life I live now, I live by faith. Yes. I want us to go back to the work of faith. And, and I want to, to answer probably a question on the place of faith and grace as a principle of our walk, the place of faith and grace. I want you to write it down so that we can discuss. I want you to know that grace is God's initiative. Faith is man's response. Period. Grace is God's initiative. Towards man, that is. Faith is man's response. And I want to say something that I think is important. Did you know everything you've seen in people happened to people? The probability that it would happen to you is so high. Yes. Okay. If you've seen someone backslide, the probability that it will come your way is very possible. Yeah. If you see someone fail a spiritual test, the probability that it would come your way is very possible. 
if you've seen somebody rebel, the probability that you will fall in that exam is very possible. It's very possible to be a victim of things you're trying to rectify. And remember what we were told one day? Doctors are not immune from the diseases they are trying to solve. You can be a victim of what you're trying to solve. That's why the Bible says when you're helping one to stand, be careful, lest you fall. If you are praying with someone who is suffering from rejection and bitterness, before you know it, you might be intoxicated. And you end up talking their language instead of talking them out of their condition. Faith is our response to the grace of God. Faith is our response to the grace of God. Everywhere you see faith in the Bible, you see grace. Huh? Says we are saved by grace through faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Grace is God reaching out. Grace is God reaching out. Hold on. Sit down for a moment. Grace is God reaching out. Man is faith responding. So you are saved by grace through faith. Response. The grace of God is a gift of God to humanity so as to elevate them from their position to God's position. Amen. But our response is called faith. When you respond by faith, then you now say, I'm saved by grace. Amen. Then you begin to do things at the level of grace which you attain by faith. So you are now living the life of God where you no longer see to believe. You believe to see. We are no longer walking by sight because sight is our level. Sight is natural. Sight is human. Sight is effort. We walk not by sight. We walk by faith. So grace is God's initiative. Faith is our response. Genesis 15. Genesis 15 verse 6. Genesis 15 verse 6. And he, that is Abram, believed in and trusted in and relied on. And listen to the language of the Bible. He, relied, he trusted in and relied on, that is to remain steadfast to the Lord. And he counted it to him as right, righteousness, that is right standing with God. Right standing with God talks about run, standing on the same position with God. Amen. So righteousness means <laughs> righteousness means <laughs> give me somebody else. <laughs> righteousness means he responded to my invitation. So we are now in right standing. Amen. So he is growing into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Amen. Christ is the divine wrapped up in the natural so as to influence the natural to transact divine agenda in a natural environment. Amen. So he is now the righteousness of God. Amen. He has the energy of God. Amen. He has the eyes of God. Amen. I have credited him as righteous. Amen. What he says is what I would say. Amen. What he thinks is what I would think. Amen. 
That's why I consult him on whether to kill Sodom or not. Amen. That's why he gives a son like I would give. Yes. That's why he's a father of faith like faith comes from God. Yes. That's why he carries blessings like I am. Amen. I am the righteousness of God. Amen. So you are no longer looking for blessings. Amen. You are aligned to the blessedness of God. Amen. That's why you say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. For it is no longer me that live. The life that I live right now, I live by the Son of God. I live by faith. Faith, therefore, is a devotion to grace. Faith is a devotion to grace. It is simply living the life provided by grace. 23 years ago, out of, of all my options, I graciously proposed to a woman. While we were still sinners. Sinners means below missing disqualified. She was sinful. In other words, she did not deserve she missed the mark. But out of all, 24 years ago, grace reached out to her. And faith grabbed grace and responded. Am I talking to somebody? And from then, by response, she no longer lived by sight. She lives by faith in the Son of God. <laughs> that is exactly how faith works. Amen. I quit, I seize me, and I carry the identity of him. I don't make my babies. I make his. I no longer have an agenda. I have his agenda. Amen. I lose my identity. Amen. I become Christ-like. I become the wife of Christ. Amen. And I bear the fruit. Yes. The children. Yes. I become a replica yes. of my head. Wow. Wow. I live by faith. Amen. So she's now Righteous. Righteous means <laughs> righteous means she's in the same frequency. I no longer have mine that doesn't have hers. All my title deeds have her as next of kin. When I open a church, not a church account, an account they would ask, who is next of kin? So she has success to my money. Now, in Christ, he had to die so that we access. Yes. By righteousness, she died. And I died. Th th that's why, listen, that's why the language of the Bible completely contradicts us. It says, for this purpose shall a man leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. That's exactly what Christ did. He left his father and be united to us. So she is now righteous. Righteous in the sense that she is in the same frequency with me. She eats money that comes from me. She no longer has her own. Mine are hers. Why are you quiet on that? She knows my weaknesses. She knows my anger. She knows my shortcomings. She knows the scars in my body. 
So she does not respond to me out of fear. She responds as a compliment. I no longer switch off the lights to undress. She is righteous. I hope somebody understands what I'm talking about. Yes. And the two shall become one. Mm. I and Christ are one. Amen. Amen. So I am no longer trying to impress him. I am in him. When a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old are all gone. Behold, everything is new. So she misses me. So she has now gained righteousness to freely have what costed me life. That is you. We walk by faith. Now listen. Our walk together. Let, 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 let me ask a simple question. Who adapts into who? Who adapts into who in this? Does she become or I become? She becomes. She becomes. Now, free advice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know whether to say this, but, but, but don't worry if I step on you. That's okay, okay? That's why you realize when the woman is too strong for the man, adoption becomes an issue. Because it's trying to change the question. So, the church shall live by faith. So now, she knows me more than my explanation. Her responsive, her pleasure is in making me happy. That is what we are to Christ. Now listen, we sign a contract. So she's not my house help. She's not earning a salary. She's not trying to impress me. So she no longer cook as a duty. She doesn't do it out of fear. She can't stop doing it. Even when she's not happy. It is beyond how she feels. She doesn't come home when she has time. Because it's beyond. When she visits you, she has to report back. Because of not having to fulfill duty, but she is now her self. Yes. That is exactly what it means to live by faith. Yes. I no longer try to do things to impress Christ. Yes. Because I am not her boyfriend. Yes. I am her husband. Yes. I am the head. Yes. That's what Christ is to us. We don't seduce him. Yes. We don't buy him gift. Yes. We don't try to impress him. Yes. We live in him. Yes. We live by faith. Yes. In Christ. Yes. So listen. I am not a servant of Christ. For lack of another word. I am the wife to Christ. Amen. My service to him. Fulfills my womanhood. Yes. Every woman wants to please a husband. If you see a woman who is being reminded to cook, to come home, to be in the fellowship, to give, to pray, to be in the house, to do the will, Jesus said, 
my food, that which refreshes me, that which satisfies me, that which gives me meaning, that which gives me relevance, that which I live for is to do the will. Am I talking to somebody this morning? It's no longer duty. It's no longer honey. If my time allows, Somebody called me and said, you know, I have this um, opportunity, not opportunity, I have this call on duty to go for a trip. But I want to consult my husband to see if he will be okay with it. Now, activists will not fill into that category. Exactly. Listen, it's ridiculous when we make the giver of life secondary. My friends and brothers, church, Christ, our service to him is not after work. It's not when we have time. That's why God initiated what we call faith ordinance. And I'm sorry, I'm mixing you up, but you're okay. He established what we call faith ordinance. Those things that are principal to a subject in terms of marriage. God said the firstborn is mine. Not as a rule, but as a principle of acknowledging who is supreme. He said the tithe is mine. He said early in the morning, seek me. He talks about your youthful life. Commit to the Lord. We live by faith. We walk by faith. We are on a pilgrimage. And this is why. Because when you marry a woman, and, and please understand me from the context of real marriage. Forget about partnership, associations. Let yako ni lete yangu. Kidogo kidogo ujasa. Na isipochasa tutalete investor watatu. You know those things. <laughs> By grace, she won my appro ap approval. Amen. She won my proposal. Amen. There were a million and one. She was not the best. She was graced. Amen. Okay? She did not marry what I had. She responded by faith. In hope that everything I promised would become because faith yes. is a substance. Yes. This walk is called a walk of faith. And Abraham believed God. And it was gratitude to him as righteousness. Abraham, whoever you bless, God will have blessed. Now, when you understand the work of faith, then you are no longer a companion of God. You are actually part of God. And for lack of the right explanation, because of your level of understanding in terms of theology, let me say it and we throw. You actually, when you become one with someone, you become who they are. And the two shall become one. So she's no longer Susan. She's Mrs. Bitok. Amen. Actually, Susan Wangare is no longer. She no longer has a name. She has no identity. She is Mrs. Amen. So the life she lives now, she lives by faith. If I became a crook, I've destroyed a life. 
That's why when death comes, she becomes free. And I don't want to tell you what death today because that's for married people. Listen. A believer enters into not an agreement. We enter into a new life. Amen. It's called marriage. Amen. And both Adam and Eve were both naked. Yes. And they were not ashamed. Listen, Christ doesn't look at your negativity and your nakedness. He is the reason. Adam said, now this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Can I say something stupid? Our interaction reproduces me. That's what, eh, I've lost some people. Are you here? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you here? That's why if she conceives my seed, the baby, what do you call it when it's in the womb? The fetus lives by her blood, eats from her system. But when the baby is born, it is my blood. Anything you receive from Christ, when you bring forth, the blood must be. We live by faith. So our genes, our blood group, Jesus, you may need to brag for a moment and let somebody know that you are born again. I am born again. Listen, I don't need to go to heaven. I have the genes of the master. Jesus one day wanted to teach his disciples how to live by faith. And he says, Peter, Peter, come, 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 come. I know you've tried to catch fish the whole night. Out of your brains, out of your expertise, out of what you've learned. Let me show you how we do these things by faith. We do it contrary to time, contrary to any information. According to your knowledge, you catch fish at night in the middle of the sea. But by faith, we call fish. If, if you don't understand what I'm saying, I'll make you pay. Listen, we live by, we wait for the sun to show up. Yes. After we are through with our efforts, he walks in and says, listen, before we do that, let me show you something. We align your boat into the culture of the kingdom. That's why, listen, friends. You can enter into partnership with God. Amen. So he said, listen, boy, you have used it to try and catch your income. Uh -huh. Nothing. Yeah. Bring it to me. Let me use it first. Uh -huh. Bring it to the, to the, um, yes. yes. And then Jesus on that, after Peter had signed up, his economic life to kingdom purpose. Those of you who are in church on Sunday, there is something we talked about. Well, you said church or here. What is in the kingdom? What, where, what is the kingdom in it? It is church or something. What is in the kingdom for it? What is of the kingdom in what you're doing? It was here. What is of the kingdom in, in your work? Yes. What is kingdom in your work? How is the kingdom represented in your work? After it had served the kingdom, he said, hey, get in. Launch into the deep. And Peter tried to use his upstairs yeah. to explain things that are not learned. Yeah. <laughs> That's why faith is not class. Yeah. Faith is revelation. Amen. It is illumination. Amen. It is light. And that's why people who walk by faith don't seem to have common sense. They talk things 
You hear a brother came from nowhere. They have no father. They have no mother. They have no basic education, but they are dreaming. And that's why they say, as hey, students, you be very careful, especially considering who will be your employer. <laughs> because as hey, students are always employed by these students. Yes. Or they marry. Either way. But listen. <laughs> what was I saying? Uh -uh. <laughs> I didn't say anything. So where were we? Peter. So Peter tried to explain to Christ. I said, listen, sir. According to our upstairs, according to our knowledge, according to the accumulation of our knowledge, according to our decree, according to the research of those who began fishing, yes. you do these things at night in the deep part of the ocean. Listen, sir. It is it's not... But listen, Peter, it is not you. It is me trying to do it through you. Amen. Because I want to make you. Amen. And Peter threw his net. And guess what he got? He got what completely confused his head. Listen, the things of faith are so crazy that you can't repeat them. You can't redo them. Because when you redo them, they become head knowledge. Oh, boy. I, I wish you write that down. You missed that one. What did you get? Listen, the things of faith are so ridiculous that you can't gram them. You, 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 you can't redo them. You can't say, I'm going back to catch fish like I did. No, because when you do that, it has moved from faith to head knowledge. It's now become religion. And God hates familiarity. It becomes what? Tangible. Yes, tangible. You can predict. One plus one equals two. It has no formula. Uh -huh. The things of God are new every day. Amen. It's called a walk of faith. You cannot predict the future based on the past. Yes. Yes. Can I tell you something surprising? Yes. Do you realize throughout the Bible, God has never repeated a formula. Yes. God has never done two things the same way. Because God is not short of it. You know what kills us? How he did it. You know what brings pain to us? How you did it for her. You know what kills us? Our time based on somebody. Everybody is. Why not me? Lord, why not? People are getting it. Why not me? Listen, we live by faith. I want to encourage you. Amen. Grace is a qualifier uh -huh, that eliminates human's input. Amen. Amen. Grace is a it is a certificate. Yes. It is a certificate that declares you fit. Amen. It is not of our works. Mm -hmm. It is not our effort. I am praying that we mature to a level where we act by faith, Amen. not by instructions. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it was that in the Bible, there was no giving time. People came to church knowing that the service involves one, two, three. And so people knew the service is completed by one, two, three. It's unfortunate today if the pastor forget to ask for an offering or a tithe. People will graciously walk out thanking God that he forgot today. Yes. If you want to prove it, how many people have been taught on giving? Some people, listen, with all due respect, Several churches, before every giving, somebody must rise up for 10, 15 minutes to motivate people to give. In every service. I used to be a motivator of giving. Oh, yes. I was a preacher everywhere. I used to preach. I used to be called the only male preacher among women preachers because I was a preacher of women, a preacher of boys, a preacher of girls. I preach, I preach to Sunday schools. I preach everywhere. And my message was one. Giving. A pastor would invite me and say, oh, no, no, you are to you. Yes. 
nilitoa toa toa hiyo pesa. Hii watu ni vichwa ngumu. Na watu wa Mungu nilitoa pesa. Nilitoa pesa. Ya oh nilitoa pesa. Ya? Yes. Oh yes. Now listen. I discovered when you try to do it and you are not graced. Yes. You either offend people or you get frustrated. That's why listen. When you hear somebody say, I've been discouraged, I've been listen, you are answering yourself loudly. <laughs> Nobody can discourage you. Yes. You've just found found out where you are not graced. Uh -huh. Thieves respond to grace. Prostitutes cannot withstand grace. When you have it, it will be evident. Amen. If you stay with a generous person, yes. you will feel the generosity. Amen. If you stay with a thief, <laughs> you remember we said everybody carries an environment. Yes. Let me prove it. The Bible says if you receive a righteous man, yes, yes they come with their environment. Yes. And that environment becomes your reward. Yes. So say with me, Grace, grace is God's qualification. God's qualification. Say faith, faith is man's response. Is man's response. Now, let, let, let's, let's, let me analyze in the next 10 minutes and then I'll stop. I'll stop today on time. Faith, therefore, is a devotion. Amen. Faith is a devotion. What is devotion? We studied devotion the whole of 2021, isn't it? Yes. Devotion. What is a devotion? Devotion is an act or a response of love. An act or a response of love which is practice not by commitment. Come with me. Look at, hey, come with me. In the corporate world we measure commitment. In the kingdom Commitment does not. It is devotion. Amen. Because commitment is based on rules, regulations, and benefits. Yes. And results. Mm -hmm. Devotion is based on love. Amen. <clears throat> Listen, when we wed people, we say this. Will you, da, da, da as long as through all the changing circumstances and varying, as long as both of you, we are not talking about commitment. We are talking about devotion. Amen. So whether they go up and down, you say, we, we, ni wangu buwana. Listen, it's called devotion. Amen. Now listen. When we marry Christ, yes, yes. we marry his love. Amen. Amen. Faith, therefore, is a devotion of our conviction. Amen. Amen. Listen to me, friends. Look, look at me, my brothers and sisters. We need to learn love. Yes. Because love is a revelation. Devotion is the practice of love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The culture is called faith. Amen. When somebody says, I love you, they are simply saying, I have a revelation about you that creates a devotion to you. Amen. That's why I've said again and again, I still have a contention. And I, and I understand we are Kalenjins and Luyas and Luos and Turkanas and Masais and Rentiles and all those. We have a problem with language. When you hear someone saying, this is my covenant brother, it is a misplaced word. Because covenant simply means I gave you my heart and you gave me your heart. All my problems are your responsibility. In the curriculum of David and a gentleman called Jonathan, covenant. Jonathan said, you will be a king. 
as much as I'm an heir to the throne. If you become David, I have become. Forget about this covenant brother where you want to search for shortcomings. There is no betrayal than a betrayal from an altar of covenant. Listen, friends, there are people who will never recover some things in life. Betrayal is sinful. Betrayal is bad. There are people who will never recover some things. Never get into somebody's heart if you're not trustworthy. Stay in the corridor. I have five minutes. Keep praying. I'm finishing. Faith, therefore, is a devotion of love. It is a great love, affection, born from admiration for someone, for something, and for a cause. It is, devotion is a great love, affection, Express or born from admiration for someone, something, or a cause. Now listen, Abraham was devoted. Romans, not Romans, Hebrews. Are you there? Hebrews chapter 10, verses 8. Is it chapter 10, really chapter 11? Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8. Let's read together. Arched on, everybody, by faith. Remember, faith is a devotion. I have faith in you. You want to try and tell your neighbor I have faith in you? Did you say it? I didn't expect you to say it. Because I didn't want you to lie. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I didn't expect you to say it. Yeah. Why are you so quick to lie? Do you really have faith in the person you talk about? <laughs> oh, they are grammings. They, they, they are in class. <laughs> Thank you. Arch by faith. Now listen. It is not Abraham the man. It is a union of marriage. Boy. It is Abraham God. Yeah. It is Abraham Jehovah. Yeah. Now listen. <laughs> hey, Jehovah. Listen. There was no destination for Abraham to go. He walked by faith. You know how faith came? Yes. By hearing God. You know, Abraham responded to what? Faith is a response to a divine instruction. Yes. That practice is called devotion. Amen. Abraham was going nowhere. Because Abraham was now Abraham. Yes. So where he was, God was. Yes. And so Abraham did not go anywhere. He just met some rounds in God. Yes. That's why, according to God, it was not location. It was the principle. It was not like you will find blessings. No, he say, I bless you. I will make you. Uh -huh. I will you. I will you. I will you. Listen, friends. Faith is living in the economy of God. Talking the language of God. You know, the other day I posted something and somebody was, you know, discussion. I, I posted something on this thing we call, um, we call um, uh, temperaments. You know? And I know we, we, we even teach it sometimes in church. We have temperaments. Listen, we have no temperaments. A believer has no temperaments. Our temperaments are the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Those are our temperaments. Yes. We are no longer sanguines. And my... Choleric and mellow, mellow, mellow something. We are not. We are righteous. 
We are just. We act by faith. We are not melancholic. We are patient. What? Melancholic means people who do what? Huh? You don't know. Who are melancholic? You teach those things a lot. Who is a melancholic? Huh? They are not loud. Mm. Who is, what do you call, who is a sanguine? Huh? Huh? All over. So I am not a sanguine. I am joyful. Yeah. I am not under those Adamic nature. And by the way, where is the scripture to support melancholic and sanguine? It's a discovery of a confused man who had taken some something. So, arch by faith, Abraham, when he was called, he obeyed and went forth to a place which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. Now, listen, did Abraham receive? Listen, God tells Abraham, I'm your great reward. God tells Abraham, I am your reward. He left looking for a place where he will inherit. God says, I am your reward. And he went, although he did not know or trouble his mind. Yes, he did not trouble his mind. The problem is where? Upstairs. He did not trouble his mind of where he was going. Do you realize Abraham lived in tents? And the Bible says as he went, ultimately the Bible says he looked upwards. And he was looking for a heavenly city, heavenly Jerusalem, a, a city whose architect builder is God. Come with me. When Abraham walked on earth, he got no baby. When he walked in God, Amen. grace is a qualification. Faith. Is a response. Amen. We walk by faith. We live by faith. So listen. Devotion is love, passion, affection, and it goes extra. It is an intensity that controls your hormones. Mm. How many of you have ever been in love? Whether it was a confused or genuine one. C come on. Anybody? Even stones have been in love, you know? Yes. Good. How many of you, when you thought about your lover, every part of you, yes, you, you, yeah, yes, it says, <laughs> it should be an affection that has an intensity on your hormones. When you think about them, it changes everything about you. Yes. Can I encourage you? That is how God loves us. He is so affectionate of us. He is so passionate of us. He is so intense. A man who is willing to give his only begotten son Without a woman to have another one. Yes. That man is in love. Yes. Amen. Help me look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. I am devoted. I am yes. I am what? Devoted. One day somebody said, hey, our evening service takes too long because we need to rush home and take care of our something. That's devotion. Anything that makes you leave the other one is your devotion. Yeah, that other one. That's devotion. Can I tell you something? When you are through with this life, there is one person who is devoted to you. That even in your grave, he will be with you. A true lover. That's why God is not a lover. God is. He has nothing to give. He is the gift. Uh -huh. Amen. That's why God has no word. He is the word. Amen. That's why he's, he has no eternity. He is eternity. Amen. He has no life. He's life. Amen. He has no door. He's the door. Amen. 
Would you help me tell your neighbor, neighbor? neighbor. God, is God is intense about you. Devotion is a hunger that longs for satisfaction. It's understood, baby. It's one. Devotion. You, you see why she's rushing out? Devotion. Devotion. There is something she's devoted to. Sikia. <laughs> so Devotion. I be in a cafe. What do I go home, Samoja? Because they were devoted home. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Habram, God says, come out. Habram, get to your wife and get a baby. Habraham, take your son, the one you are devoted to. The one you love. See your smile? The one you love. And listen to what God says. He says your only son. So according to God, Habram and how many? The one he loves. Look at me. You only have what you love. You only give what you have. You know why we are never blessed? Because we give nothing. We give nothing. Because we give his smiles. Tunatoa ile atupendi, enye mebaki, enya itusumbui, enya itutoshi, the one you love is the only one you have to give. Yes. So what do you love? 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 I understand. If you don't answer, I understand. Because until love is in you to make you, the opposite of love is selfish. It says, it says this. A good shepherd, a good, no, no, no. Um, what does it say? A good, shep, a, a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. There is a place for a friend. What manner of love is this? That God, yes. Now, now listen. You can only give if it has to be called give what you love. Let me ask you a question. Without trying to coerce you. If you are 50 bob and you have a thousand, which one do you think probably you love? <laughs> and you watch your story, yeah? <laughs> ah, yeah. Now, let, let me tell you something again that you think, I think you need to know. Do you realize you know what you love? <laughs> huh? That's right. That's why there are people you love. Yes. Perfect. Yes. You know why you love them? Because they are giveable. Not to, but to you. You know why you love me? Because I am available for you. I loved you, that's why you love me. Because you can't love me unless I love you. So it is, it is my willingness to be available to you that makes you... Love you. Yes. That's why serving God happens on the platform of devotion. He has to win you before he can walk through you. Listen, God cannot use you partially casually, sometime. The Bible says, if you have to follow me. Let's, let's, let's paraphrase that scripture. If any man will come after me. Uh -huh. Let's try it. Let's try it. I know it's a scripture we don't like. If any man would ha come after me, he has to do what? He has to do what? Deny himself. And pick up his own cross and follow me. God uses you to fulfill what you're willing to die for. That's why ministry is not preaching. Ministry is death. 
what can discourage you out of it is what you love. That is my story. What can discourage you out of it is exactly what you love. Basta kaya niyo masikita niyo masema. Enye ita kutoa kwa iyo enye unafanya. Ndiyo aswa enye unapenda. Yeah. What can get you out of is exactly what you love. Na neno itaendelea. Mubiri anasema kila chambo na wakati wake wakupana na kufu wakuchia na kucheka. Hallelujah. Ina wimu Kila chakati Na mojira ya Wimu Wimu Mubiri Anasema Kila chamo Na wakati wa Chira yake Wimbonya yakati sote na majira yote Wimbo Itaimba haleluya Itaimba haleluya Look at me. Anything you claim to love will be tested. Anything you claim to be passionate about will be tested. Consider the following thought as you go home. Any new level comes with a new test. Before God can entrust you with people's lives, he has to test your love and your resilience towards what you call ministry. Amen. And Lord, we thank you tonight. Thank you for ministering to our hearts. Watch over us tonight, Lord, and watch over our friends and brothers and sisters and our families. And as we honor you with our giving tonight, we are blessed. Giving, Lord, is not a duty, it's a devotion. We give because we love. We know that God loved the world because he gave his only life through his son. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Is there anybody who is not born again tonight and you want to give your life to Jesus? Anybody? 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 All right. What you love, you want to do. You want to show everybody. I was telling the young people, if anybody tells you I love you, and they say it's a secret between me and you, leave that terrorist alone. Anybody wants to display what they love, they want to tell anybody who cares to hear and those who don't. Stand on your feet, package your offer.